Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. This is part 5 of my course, The Practical Guide to Mac Security. This course is brought to you for free thanks to my great Patreon supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon for more information. So security questions are an old technique used on accounts that hopefully you don't see too much anymore. But you see them often enough that we should talk about them. Because they actually don't make your account more secure. They make it less secure. But they do serve a purpose. So for instance, a security question may be something like, what's your mother's maiden name? Or what is your pet's name? And you may get asked this. And the idea is that if you lose your password, you can get back into your account by answering one of these security questions. Either online or perhaps with a phone call to the service trying to reestablish contact with your account. And they'll ask you one of these questions and you respond with whatever it is that you put down and they know that it's you. But in fact, this makes things less secure. It's basically creating a back door. First problem is, of course, these are easy to guess. I mean, how many pet names are there? Probably with only 100 or 200 pet names, you can have all of the different pet names for 90% of the pets in the world. The same thing with street names and they're also easy to find. Like if somebody wants to break into your account, they could probably find your mother's maiden name pretty easily or even the street you grew up on pretty easily just by looking online at various resources. They're also difficult to change. If you know that your information has been compromised and somebody now knows the name of the street you grew up on or the make of your first car, how do you change that? That's part of your history. If you change it to something else, then it's no longer true. And also consider it's less than one factor. Instead of your password, all they need is this information about you. And this information about you is much easier to get than your password. So instead of increasing the number of factors, it's actually keeping the number of factors at one. You either need your password or the answer to one of the security questions. And since the security questions are easier to guess and to find, then it actually makes things weaker. So here are some of the security questions you may see. I'm sure you've all seen every one of these and there are probably a dozen more that are commonly asked. And it doesn't really matter how unusual they are to get. They're just not very secure. Some typical answers would just be a last name and really with just a few hundred last names you've covered most last names in the world. Make of cars is even less. With just a few dozen you've covered most people's answers. Streets growing up on most people have grown up on streets with names that are only maybe in a list of several hundred names. And pets names are even weaker than that. There are some popular pet names uh, used throughout the world and you may think yours is unusual but it's still going to be easier to guess your pet's name than uh, say a password. And if you've ever posted anything to social media then of course the pet's name is probably out there as well as a lot of this other information as well. So ideally you don't want to use security questions, but you usually don't have a choice. When a site has these, you have to fill them out. You have to provide an answer. So what do you do? Well, basically you lie. You create answers that are nonsensical. I like to use numbers because a lot of times you end up talking to somebody on the phone. They'll say, well, confirm that it's you. What's your mother's maiden name? And I could very easily read out a list of numbers to them. And they can understand those numbers. Whereas a password with letters and numbers, sometimes it can be hard for the other person to hear exactly what you're saying. But you can add a few letters in there if you like, maybe a dash, that kind of thing. Um, and the important thing to do is whatever you create, make it randomly generated. So maybe using a password manager's password generator. Sometimes you can generate a random number. Uh, you can then record these in your password manager or write them down in a secure document that you keep maybe with other secure information. So let's say you have an email account. It's going to want some of the security questions. It prompts you for them. You come up with these random odd answers that nobody's going to be able to guess. You make sure you write those down so in case you need them you have somewhere you can go and look them up and read off this number to whoever, whoever it is you're talking to on the phone. So uh, they get the right answer and I'm sure they won't think this is strange because a lot of people like me already do this. So they're used to seeing random answers like this in place of real ones.
If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.